Hawk from Forever Metal. I'm sitting with Eric AK from the legendary thrash metal band Flouts of Injetso. How's the tour going so far? Uh, so far so good. Um, we're only on show number five I think on this tour but uh, crowd reaction is amazing and uh, selling a lot of merch and you know we haven't beat each other up yet so we're doing all right. Still alive as well? Yeah. <laughs> Barely. That's no, good. Still alive. Uh, any places that you're playing that you haven't as of yet on this tour? Um, geez, that's a good one. You know, I think there's a couple places, but most of the places we're playing, we've played 20 years ago. You know, so it's um, it's kind of nice to revisit old crowds and uh, old venues and and uh, get in into touch with. Uh, you know what we once had before so it's kind of nice okay any funny tour stories um you know not really yet on this one except uh we have minimal crew and no tour manager and no uh you know we're basically doing everything ourselves so um instead of drinking and partying all night waiting for the crew to load everything we're busy 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 and then we pass out so <laughs> it's uh, it's kind of a different thing but you know times are hard for touring right now so um, other other even bigger bands than us are knuckling down and uh, taking cheaper buses and less crew and all that because it's just uh, it's just a, a hard time to tour right now is a uh, touring different in the states compared to overseas oh yeah way different um, we draw, you know, 600 to 1,000 people every night overseas, and, uh, you know, here we can do you know, maybe 500 max, something like that, depending on where we are. So it's, it's a little different. Um, in some ways, it's more comfortable to tour in the States. Um, you're used to the food. There's always something open, all that kind of stuff, you know, but... In the, uh, overseas, you know, they work six hours a day and every shop and every convenience store, everything closes. So after the show, you're like, oh, I'm hungry, I want to go get something to eat. There's nothing anywhere, you know, um, except unless you're in a major city. So it's, um, it's a little more comfortable to tour in the States, but the crowds are better over there. Um, they're more into metal. Everybody's into metal. You see doctors and lawyers and judges showing up to the metal shows, you know. Um, and it's a little different for us because our a lot of our fans are older. And in Europe, they're all bringing their kids and all that stuff. So they're starting the next generation of metal fans. And um, here we get a little of that, but, but not as much. So. So the flip side of the question is, if you had an option to tour more in Europe compared to in the States, what do you think you would do, or is it kind of 50-50? Yeah, it's, it's kind of 50-50. I, you know, I'm, I really love our, uh, our fans in America. Um, we've got a lot of hardcore fans that have been with us since day one, and um, they always show up to the shows. and. Um, Facebook fan, fans that show up, so it's um, it's just a, it's just different. Not one's really not better than the other. They're just different. Okay, interesting enough. I know you did a big tour, European tour with Overkill. What was that like? Yeah, Overkill and Destruction, and um, you know it, it was a lot of fun. The Overkill guys are are easy to get along with. We're really good friends with Destruction, have been for years and years. So it was, uh, you know, it's kind of like touring with your brothers or something. It's uh, it's really comfortable. There's not any, you know, if you need something, you just ask somebody and you get it. And it's there's no there's no egos really involved because we all know each other and we all have known each other forever and you know we're all friends. So there's not really any. Uh, egos or competition going on you know we're all 
have our own little styles of metal. So. Yeah, Jason was on the last album, right? Yep, Jason was on the last album. It's funny because his two favorite bands in the world are Flotsam and Overkill, and he's been in both of them now. He's like, I can die now, I'm good to go. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny. Matter of fact, he's uh, he's gonna kind of fill in for a week on this tour someplace because uh, Ken's got to go do some stuff with Fifth Angels. Nice, nice. Man. That'll that'll fit in real quick. Um, any bands that you guys haven't toured with that you would like to? Uh, wow. Really, any band that we haven't toured with, I'd like to. Um, not really anybody specific. I mean, some huge bands I'd like to tour with. I'd like to go out with Metallica, of course, or Iron Maiden. Or we've done a couple shows with Priest before, but um, I'd like to do some, some full tours with bands like that. would be great. Um, we've for a long time, we've been trying to get a little package tour together with Metal Church because we're good friends with those guys, and it just never happens. You know, they they want to do it, we want to do it, and when we try to get it together, you know, times and and uh, just situations don't gel. So we haven't been able to get it together, but we will eventually. That would be a great tour. Yeah, I, I think I it's love some, Metal Church. Yeah, they're they're, awesome. they're great people. I saw I work with them on seventy and most down-to-earth people I've ever seen. Yep, yep, they're and very they're, cool. They're touring and not coming to Florida. So, you guys do a tour together, make sure you come to Florida. <laughs> um, I know we're going to go into the album a little bit. What songs did you like recording the most on the new album and why? Ooh. This album, uh, vocally, you know, usually I like songs because they were a big challenge. Um, I get to know push myself a little bit and see what I can do that I haven't done before or see how strong I can make things sound and uh, because of that fact I usually have one or two songs on an album that I just love this album every single song was a challenge every single song I pushed myself to the limit and um, I couldn't pick a favorite I don't think um, there's some lyrically that I like more than others, Recover has some deep meaning for me. Um, Unwelcome Surprise is one of the, the funner ones that I've written, so um, I like those lyrically maybe more than some of the others, but I, I really don't think I could pick a favorite off of this record. Speaking of pushing your voice, where a lot of singers, as they get older, they lose their octave range, but for some odd reason over the years, you've maintained yourself and also have become a lot better. How do you do that? Do you, you know, train, how do you keep your voice in shape? Yeah, I, I think, you know, some, some singers uh, warm up before a show and, um, and the more they warm up, the better the show is for them, the easier the show is for them. I think my whole career I've been warming up and I'm now <laughs> finally doing the show you know what I mean um, it just seems to me like the more I sing the better it gets and I don't know why but I don't really do anything special I mean I I, I take care of myself a little better now I was at a throat doctor and he showed me all kinds of stuff that I could be doing just to maintain my my voice and uh, I do that stuff and drink a lot lot more water now but um, really nothing special I think it's I, I just put it up to my whole career so far I've just been warming up to, to be where I am now interesting okay um, with all the lineup changes over the last couple of years from album to album how do you guys maintain the chemistry together? Because when you go live and you go into a studio, you guys haven't lost a step. It seems that you guys are getting better and better and better, even with the multiple lineup changes. So how do you guys keep that chemistry? You know, we've never really had any players. I've never really had any players in Flots on that were subpar. I mean, everybody I've ever had in this band has been amazing musicians. And um, 
you know, we rehearse, we we concentrate on being tight, we concentrate on everybody knowing everybody else's parts and all that. So, uh, you know, there's always at least one person that I lock onto and everybody else seems to lock onto. Um, right now it's Mike Gilbert. Everybody kind of locks onto what he's doing. So if he screws up, we all <laughs> screw up, but he doesn't screw up, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, yeah, it was Jason Ward for a while. He was, he's such an amazing player that we would just follow him. And if he would go off somewhere in a song that he wasn't supposed to, we would all just follow him right there, right down the alley, you know? And um, because of that, we all recover together from those kind of things. So that it, it eliminates having train wrecks on stage. Good. Um. The new album seems to have gotten a little bit heavier than the last one, in, in my personal opinion. What was the hardest song to write and keep that tenacity? Who? Um, I tell you, "Control" is the song that I had the most trouble writing. I think I wrote uh, probably six different complete sets of lyrics and melody lines for that song. And I didn't like any of them. I, I told them, you know what, let's just get rid of this one and we'll do one of the other 40 songs they wrote me. And uh, they just kept saying, no, we love the song, you just try it again, you know. And I worked for months on that thing. And I finally sent the song to Ken. And I said, Ken, let's see what you can do with the melody line on this. And he sent me back lyrics and melody line and I loved it and I recorded it. and. That was that was the one that I had the most trouble um, making it uh, up to the same level as all the rest of the songs on the record. And uh, luckily, Ken had some great ideas right off the bat, so it really uh, brought it up to the same level as the rest of them. Yeah, the album's got a lot of good melodies to it as well, yeah. and a lot of heavy heavy hooks yeah. to it. I had nobody giving me any direction as to which way I should go or you know they they would send me a song with a title and sometimes it would it would spark uh, an idea for lyrics sometimes it would spark an idea for melody but I would always take whatever title they give me listen to what the song sounds like and run with it from there so um, they, you know they like I said they wrote me 40 something songs between the two guitar players and we had a lot of stuff to work on when we got down to about 20 of them that I've had melody lines and lyrics written for then we kind of put the rest of them aside and concentrated on those 20 and we finally got it down to 14 and so we're um, it, it was a lot of work and um, it's, most of the songs were pretty easy for me to put melody lines and lyrics on because those guitar players just kept writing wonderful song after wonderful song. You know. Now you hear with labels, they want you to write a certain way, sound a specific certain way with AFM Records, or you have the freedom to do whatever you guys want, and they say, okay, maybe make it a little bit heavier or a little bit lighter, which changes around a little bit, because I know you guys have been around for quite some time, so sometimes labels will put up a limit on you. We had uh, a little bit of that when we were on MCA Records. They wanted us to be a little more poppy, a little more, you know, they wanted to, to uh, wanted us to cross over into different crowds and stuff. And, and one of the reasons why we're not still with them is because we didn't want to go that route. You know, we are who we are. And uh, we didn't really want to change into something else, even though it, it could have meant a lot more money and a lot more fame and a lot, you know, uh, doing this 24-7 as a career instead of having to go home and get jobs, but it, it would, we really weren't going to be happy doing that, so um, we've been on a lot of labels for that reason mainly. Um, AFM has never told us a direction in any way, shape, or form you know, what to do with our music. When we handed in those 14 songs, they just went, oh my God, this is great. And that was it. You know, they started working on it right away. So it was pretty cool. Well, I didn't think they could say anything but 
It's great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Compared to uh, listening to the last one, I've been a fan since I've been a kid, obviously. But listening to the last one, it's like, how the fuck did these guys get heavier? And then the new one comes out, it's like, Jesus. And usually people's bands will slow down a little bit, take a little bit off the edge, or stay to the same speed, same style, they're tired and it gets boring. Where Flotsam has gotten better and better, faster, and just... Uh, when we did the, uh, the self-titled record, I wanted to blame the heaviness and the fastness on Bittner. Because we had just gotten him, he, you know, it was his first record with us, and his playing was just unbelievable in the studio. I mean, he was Mr. One Take on everything. So I wanted to blame that heaviness and that energy on him, but, you know, the end of chaos, we got Ken in there, who's the same age as the rest of us, and, and even a longer career, and it's even heavier and faster and more melodic than the last one, so... I think we're, you know, we finally have been warming up our whole careers and we're finally in our groove. Speaking of Ken, it's the next question. How did you guys become to meet him and bring him in? Um, Steve Conley has been working with Ken because they both produce other people's albums and stuff like that. And uh, he's been working with Ken. Ken's got a nice, really nice studio. They've been working together for a couple of years, a few years. They've been friends. They've done some uh, some hired gun shows for people before. So they've known each other a while. And, um, you know, when we needed a drummer, he just asked Ken, hey, you know, are you interested in doing this? And Ken was really kind of excited for the challenge because this was a lot heavier and faster than the stuff that he's done in his career. And boy, he just stepped right up. He didn't have any trouble getting heavy and fast with us. So it was, it was nice. It was, a, it was a surprise, but it was nice. Yeah, I was, I won't say I was shocked, but I was shocked. Yeah. When I heard that, I was like, damn, because when I saw you guys uh, open for Hammerfall, I was looking at the guy, I was like, See in the band, he looks a little bit older than most, and he got behind the kid. I was like, holy shit, this yeah. guy can fucking play. Yeah, he can play. And the thing that gets me is, not only is he playing that stuff exact to the T live, but he's spinning both sticks and yeah. you know, messing around and doing goofy stuff back there and never misses a beat. So, you know, he's just a, a, consummate, a consummate professional. He really is been doing this a long time he's very into it he's not just a guy that plays drums he is an actual professional drummer you know and he's played on a million people's studio records um, he played with Alice Cooper he was on tour with Accept for a while he's you know he's done so much stuff it's just ridiculous and we just kind of gave him a backbone of drum parts for the new songs and he ran with him and really brought him to life. Well, hopefully, you know, you guys can keep him for another album or two <laughs> or a little bit further on uh, down the so. line. He seems to be pretty happy with us so far. So. Yeah, he looks like he's having, everybody looks like they're having fun on stage. Um, that's that's all that matters. Um, with all the years that you guys have been playing live and recording, how do you guys keep it fresh and fun? You know, one of the things is we all really like our own music. So when we're up there playing, even though we've played those songs 80 million times, we really like playing them. We like the songs, um, you know, we like the melodies, we like the solos and the guitar parts, and then we really like the stuff that we're doing. And that makes a big difference. There's a lot of bands out there who are playing stuff that they wrote because they had to have an album out, you know, and they're not, it really wasn't from the heart. And when you're playing that stuff every night, it, you really can't put the energy into it. You can't go, oh, here it goes again. And, you know, we actually like playing these songs, so it, it makes a big difference. Other songs from specific, or albums that you try not to play live? Because you do have a very vast catalog. But are there some that you won't play or you choose not to play just because you don't you're not into it? 
there aren't any there aren't any albums or songs that I won't play. <laughs> but like the the Cold album, for instance, I'm the only one in the band that's on that record right now. So these guys have that frame of mind that <coughs> that we have so many songs to choose from. Why would we choose songs that we're not on? You know, why don't we choose songs we are on? We could have five sets worth of that stuff. And I kind of get that, but I've made them promise they were going to let me do the set list on one of these tours and they're just going to have to play whatever I put. <laughs> so. well, one of the tours, throw Rabbit's Foot in there and oh, be yeah. good to go. Yeah, I know that's one of my favorites too. So Yeah, it has a lot of uh, meaning, I think, soulful. Yep, it does. True meaning. That's why she's like, make sure you ask him, make sure you ask him. I'm like, all right, I'll ask him. Um, now, we were talking about gear, and I had some questions geared towards Michael. But you said you have gear that you would like to talk about too. So there, it's a two-part question. Some musicians will use gear live, and then they'll use gear in the studio that are different. So if it's different, just talk about both elements to it. Uh, really, the only the only gear that I'm really married to are my West Tone in ears. Um, I bought a pair from them probably 10 years ago. I'm on the same pair, the same cord, the same everything. They've never messed up on me. Um, they sound great. They have three drivers in them, so they're, you know, the, the high, mid, and low separation is amazing. And I've never had to call them and say, hey, I need these fixed, or I need new ones, or I'm using the same pair about 10 years ago. and. They gave me an artist deal on them, and I don't think I'll do another show without them. It's it makes singing so much easier when you can hear every little inflection and everything that you're doing, you know. So uh, that's uh, I'm a big supporter of the West Tone in ears. Um, I've always, pretty much, almost always used Sure mics which is a basic general mic that everybody uses. But my mic, I beat the crap out of that thing. I spin it, I drop it, I've painted it, you know, I've, and I've never had to fix the thing, except for putting batteries in it. Uh, I really beat the crap out of that thing, and it just keeps going and going and going. And um, when I find gear like that, because I've had mics before, I've had some biodynamic stuff, which was good for a long time it finally fell apart you know I had some other some EV wireless mics that I used that eventually fell apart the sure mic I've got I've had it for a long time and the thing just will not die you know it just goes and goes and goes it sounds exactly the same every night and uh, it fits my voice pretty well so I'll use that thing forever once in a while, when we do a festival or something, they'll bring up the same model of mic, and I'll use that instead of mine, just to keep from wear and tear on mine, but um, it's really a tough mic. I mean, you could run a truck over that thing, and it's still going to sound great and look great the next day, so. Yeah, do you use any um, effects on the voice? Uh, I'm safe from what I hear, no, but some... A lot, some vocalist will you know um i've got we've got two sound men nate that's on tour with us right now and uh martin is our european guy and they both have a little bit of a old school vocal mix to them they a little bit of the old school delay long delay and a little bit of verb and that's it just standard stuff and um and that's pretty much it i really like the way that sounds the old the kind of old school delay and um, just a basic reverb that, that kind of, I don't know, hides mistakes or anything, but it just kind of gives you a little oomph, you know. And other than that, I really don't do any, you know, I never, I never do any uh, tone correction stuff or any of that. Um, you know, we're a pretty old school band. We, but you don't use auto-tune? No, no, just... no auto-tune. <laughs> No rap crap here. <laughs> Thank God. Um, speaking of 
the longevity of Flotsam, what actually keeps the band going? What drives you the most? The only thing that we can't... Um, the only thing this band really can't do without is uh, the vocals. I mean, the, no matter what, if I go to a if I go to a different band, completely different band, a different name, different types of songs, everything, it's still gonna sound like Flotsam because it's me. You know what I mean? The the trick is getting amazing players behind me to make me sound good. You know. And um, I've been pretty lucky over the years, and right now I've got one of the best lineups I've had ever. So it's it, it's kind of a, a drive and just a love to be out here doing this. My favorite thing in the world is to be in the studio, um, creating and writing. And um, I think all of us in the band kind of really love the studio end of things. We also, most of the time, really love touring. So. It's uh, it, it kind of keeps you going. It's what we really want to do for a living. It's what we have in our hearts and in our soul, and that's you know, that's kind of what keeps been keeping us going for all these years. I don't know what keeps Ken going all these years, but what's that? I said I don't know what gets Ken going all these years, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you have to be a, a certain kind of person to have longevity in the music industry. And right now I've got a lineup of people who are that certain kind of person, so it's kind of cool. And where are you guys going to next? Ocala. Ocala, Florida tomorrow. Then we work our way up the East Coast into Canada. Then uh, across the top of the U.S. And back up to Canada again on the West Coast. And back down the West Coast. And it's just kind of a big... Uh, a big horseshoe, you know, upside down horseshoe around the the U.S. Um, five weeks. I think we have three days off in the five weeks, so it's pretty much boom, boom every night. You know. And you guys end in your home state. Yep, we end in our home state, and um, and then we're uh, we've got a bunch of European stuff coming up after that. We have a show in Cancun. In December, so we're, we're pretty busy this year. Got on that note, that concludes it. Killer. Make sure you catch Flotsam and Jetsam on the United States tour, and be sure to support them further and purchase their newest release, End of Chaos, on AFM Records.